I'm going to start off by showing a scenario that every Android developer has come up against. Here I have a layout file with the typical setup for a hello world type of application. The user enters their name into the edit text, presses the button, and the text view will greet them personally. We've all been there and done that before. This scenario also dictates a certain amount of boilerplate code. So I'm going to go over to the main activity file and then in the onCreate method I'll create a variable to hold a reference to the edit text and then I'll use the find view by ID method with the resource ID for the edit text and then I'll go over here and create a field and confirm that I do want the edit text type. Now Android Studio's editor and keyboard shortcuts make this much easier than it traditionally has been, especially if you have a lot of UI widgets that need to be discovered. Still, this seems like an awful lot of repetitive code, and more code means more places to make errors. So wouldn't it be nice if there were a way to simplify or even automate some of this? It turns out there already is, and it's called Butterknife. Butterknife lets you create a field for a UI widget, discover it via the ID resource, and cast it to the appropriate type all at once. The secret is the bind view annotation, which accepts a resource ID and is then applied to the field that holds a reference to a UI widget. And it does the cast to the correct type automatically and for free. So let's see what kind of dependencies this library needs in the Gradle file. The first dependency is a Gradle plugin that acts in the annotation processing pipeline. Annotations generate Java source code, but this is not source code that you need to touch, otherwise the annotation would be unnecessary. Also, since annotation processing is a compile time action, you don't want to be including a lot of overhead for annotations in the final application. The Android APT plugin handles this, and all that is needed for it to work is to add it to the project level Gradle build file. And that would be this file right here. So in that file, in the dependencies, I'll add a new class path for this plugin right here. And that's all for the project Gradle file, except I need to do a Gradle sync. Next, I'm going to switch over to the application Gradle file, and first I'll apply the plugin that I just added to the top. So I'll say apply plugin Android APT. Then I'm going to need to add two dependencies down in this part of the file. The first one will be Butterknife itself, so compile, and that'll be com.jakewharton Butterknife 8.2.1. And then secondly, I'll add the annotation compiler. And that'll be com.jakewharton butterknife compiler 8.2.1. Now I need to do another Gradle sync. And then I can go back over to the activity file again. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll remove this call to find view by ID. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an annotation to the edit text for bind view, which will bring in the butter knife package. And I'm going to pass it the ID for that edit text. Now, anything that you bind to, it has to be public. It can't be private or static. So I'll delete that. And then I'll go ahead and repeat the process for the text view and the button. So bind view for the text view, call it text message, and then bind to the button, and we'll call that say hello. Now down in the onCreate method, all I need to do is set the on click listener of the button. And in here, what I'll first do is I'll get the name out of the edit text. And 
and then I'll use it to set the text of the text message. Okay, and now there is one last but pivotal step. Butterknife has to be explicitly instructed to bind the annotated views. So I'll say Butterknife bind this. Now I'll run the application in the emulator and see how it works. I'll enter my name press the button and see the greeting. So it works. Now if you want to see the generated files they are not included as part of the Android view in the project pane. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to the project files tab and you have to look under the build directory under the app folder and there there's going to be this generated source folder and then there will be an apt debug folder and then there will be a folder that has a path that matches the package for your application. And then in here there's going to be these two files. Now this view binding file, this is going to be the one that has all the bindings. And here are the three widgets that I annotated using the bind annotation. And there's also a method to reverse and remove these bindings. And you should take this warning not to edit this file very seriously because the next time you build the application this file will be regenerated and your changes will be lost. And that's really all there is to it. As you can see this code here in main activity now is much cleaner and more concise. And it's also more understandable. The annotation reads more like English. Bind to the edit text called edt name the resource r.id.editTextName and it eliminates all that messy find view by ID business from before. But it actually gets even better. There is still some messy code in the app and that is the set on click listener call. As you saw I didn't attempt to write all this myself. I just let Android Studio generate it for me. And again while that's convenient it clutters the code with boilerplate. Now it turns out that Butterknife can help us again. So first I'm going to cut this on click method I'm going to paste it into a new method and I'm just going to delete the rest of this code here and I'm going to rename this method to make it more informative. Now finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to annotate this new method with the onClick annotation and I'm going to pass it the ID of the button and I'm going to need to bring this in from Butterknife as well. Now I can also remove the field for the Say Hello button up here. Now I'll run the application again and see if it gives me the same results. Try a different name this time and sure enough it still works. Now there's one more demo I want to show. First of all in the layout file I'm going to add one more button here. I'm going to give it a resource ID of say goodbye instead of say hello and I'm going to give it text of say goodbye instead of hello and then I just need to work on my relative layout attributes here. Let's take a look and see how that looks. That's good. Now I'm going to go back over to the activity file. So a common pattern in Android is to sometimes use the same listener for two different widgets and take different actions based upon the ID of the widget. And I can do that with the on click notation. I'll just add the new resource and surround them both with curly braces. Then inside of the method I'll add a switch statement and then it's going to have two cases. One will be for the hello button 
and then one will be for the goodbye button. Now let's run the app one more time to see if it works. I'll enter my name, say hello, and it says hello, say goodbye, and it says goodbye. And this is not all that Butterknife can do. It's an open source project on GitHub, so you can check out all the features there. The URL is jakewharton.github.io slash butterknife. To me, this is a simple and easy solution that saves time, typing, and reduces errors while creating source that is much easier to read. If you like this video and want to see more, I'd appreciate a like or a tweet or a comment, and thanks for watching.